So this is before with the reflection, and this is after. Before and after. That is crazy. So another of the updates that Adobe have just made available in Photoshop is reflection removal. So in this video, I want to show you how to use it and also show the kind of results that I'm getting out of it when I use it on some random reflection pictures that I took. And just to point out, this brand new technology is available in Camera Raw, so you access it through Photoshop or through Bridge. It's kind of in the beta format, so not the final shipping version, but that said, the results I'm getting are already very impressive. Okay, so the first thing to mention is that this currently works on raw files only. However, looking at the Adobe blog, you can see that there are plans to support non-raw file formats too. Now, before we can get started, just make sure that you have technology previews turned on in Camera Raw. To do that, have an image open in Camera Raw, then go to the top right-hand corner, click on the gear icon, come down to the technology preview section, and put a tick in the checkbox there. Click OK, and then restart Photoshop. So here's a few random photographs that I took just to try this out. Nothing glamorous, just a few reflections that I noticed. Obviously, these are all raw files, so I'll open them all up in Photoshop, which, because they are raw files, opens them directly in Camera Raw, which is where we find the reflection removal within the Remove section. So first of all, we have this photograph of a painting that I have of Spitfires flying over the White Cliffs of Dover, and this is also signed by several World War II Spitfire pilots. You can see the very obvious reflection in the glass with the ceiling light shade, and this here is a reflection of one of the sound panels that I have hanging from the ceiling as well. So to remove the reflection, we come to the Distraction Removal, and simply put a tick in the Reflections checkbox. And that's it. It then takes several seconds to analyze the image, and then eventually... Done. I mean, look at that. Completely remove the reflection. Incredible. While I'm here, let's just sort out the perspective by going to the Crop Tool, and then Geometry, and I'll drag out some guides. And then crop it. and use auto settings to give it a quick edit. I mean, that's impressive, a big difference, and very quickly. Now, just a few things to mention here. First of all, this is using AI, but not generative fill. And also, just to reiterate what is mentioned in the blog by Adobe, this first iteration of the tech is designed to address only one kind of reflection from plate glass windows that cover most or all of your field of view. It's not designed to remove reflections from windows that are small or far away, or where the window frame is within the field of view, or reflections from objects like wine glasses, car bodies, or clouds reflected in a lake. Now it goes on to say that they might address those kind of issues later, but clearly at the moment, the goal is to get this first version working consistently well on the kind of images that it was intended for. So let's try another image. This here is a photograph looking out onto part of our vegetable garden and fruit cage to the left. You can clearly see the reflection on the glass of the window I was photographing through. So let's give it a try. I'll simply tick the Reflections checkbox and wait a few seconds. And there you go. Now you'll notice that there is this slider here that is far over to the right with a maximum amount of 100. 
This is the setting when the reflection is completely removed. But as it says, when you hover over it, you can adjust this slider to taste. So as I drag it to the left, I start to reveal the reflection more and more. And so this gives you kind of like a creative freedom because you might not want to remove it completely, but instead simply reduce the reflection. Now, if I take the slider over to the far left to minus 100, what we're left here is just the reflection. So this here is part of the window blinds. And I think this here is part of the kitchen floor and this is skirting board. If I take the slider to the center to zero, this is the original image with the reflection as it was. But I'll take it back to the plus 100 where the reflection is gone. You have to admit that is pretty damn impressive. Now this photograph here I took of part of a window in one of our favorite cafes called the Lime Bay. The window has this stylish font, but on the other side is some boarding, so you can't actually see into the cafe. But clearly you can see me and the outside reflected onto the glass. So let's see how the reflection removal copes with this. I'll put a tick in the reflections checkbox and then wait a few seconds. And done. Check that out. There's maybe a little left just here, but I'll just grab the remove tool and brush over that area, and that's gone. Now I'll go to the edit section and choose auto. Look at that. It's just magic. All right, last one. Let's see how it removes this reflection on this glass splashback behind the cooker. Again, maybe just a few traces left, but they're very easy to remove. And I'll use that auto gain to give it a quick edit. Now, I've added a link in the description of this video to the blog post that Adobe have put together about this technology. It's definitely worth having a read of because it kind of explains a lot of the behind the scenes thinking and the challenges about this new technology. But I think it's fair to say that for a first version and on the kind of image that it's been designed for, at the moment, the results can be very impressive. I find myself saying this a lot lately, but exciting times. I'll catch you in the next video.